Mental health affects how we feel, think, and act. It changes our personality in a matter of minutes. Mental wellness is something that affects us through our childhood all the way up to adulthood. Emotional pain is not something that should be hidden away and never spoken about. There is truth in your pain. There is growth in your pain. But only if it's first brought out into the open. That was a quote by Stephen Aitchison. Mental health symptoms in adolescents grade through 12 have been present in 30% of high school students nationally, 18 who have had suicidal attempts, 9% who had suicidal attempts, and 3 who have had suicidal attempts resulting in major injuries. The statistics we're taking from a survey conducted in 2017 numbers may vary in present time. These numbers are scary high, the highest they've been in, in all of humanity's history and will probably keep on growing unless we change something. We have some experts here to give us a more inside view of some of the questions we have. My name is Ms. Conley and I have six years experience in the education field of um, mental health and I've also had experience with um, children in foster care and adoption that come into the system with severe mental health concerns. Coach Burns, uh, experience with mental illness in students, it's uh, Something that has been on the rise the last couple of years because it's more in the news, uh, more on the depression side and um, kids sort of isolating themselves and deviating away from everyone else. Some common illnesses or signs that you may see in high school students can be um, withdrawal and that can be from friends, families or activities that they normally would enjoy partaking in. There can be um, being lethargic, um, so extremely sleepy, um, not saying that they saying that they haven't gotten enough rest or that maybe they're sleeping around a lot. Um, anger, maybe you see an increase in anger or violence concerns, lack of focus. Um, if you see a student that has an increase in anxiousness or anxiety symptoms such as palpitations, difficulty breathing, those are all some things that you want to um, make sure that you address right away. Uh, at this age grade, I mean, you got 14 to 18 year olds that are in a building all together. A lot of it is, you know, their hormones can change a lot. That causes some things. There's a, a lot of the most accurate way is a traumatic experience, whether it's at the house or it's at school or it's a failure that they've had in the building that can also be a factor that leads to the mental illness itself. Some of the ways we can address the serious mental health increase amongst high school students are um, by, I would say, intervention. So teaching, educating students on what these illnesses look like, their symptoms, and ways to cope with them, um, how to prevent them from escalating, as well as the family um, the community, the, the, student, the teachers and administrations at these schools as well, they will also need to know proper ways to, um, to prevent any, any further um, escalation in these mental Listen. Listen to the kids. I mean, a lot of people, it's, oh, they need to go sit in a circle and talk. Well, a lot of people don't want to spill their business out there. Um, the other thing is, and this is going to sound bad to say, but quit talking about it. You know, it's, it's sort of like you go on WebMD and you have a cut on your hand and you look on WebMD and next thing you know you think you got lupus. I, students should be able to get uh, days off to, for mental health um, rejuvenation, I do believe. It's, it's something that um, is vital for every person, whether they're an adult or a young student, is to have that time to relax, recoup, um, de-stress, because it's, high school especially can become very stressful, as we know, and it's very important for students to have that time to kind of go through a process with themselves and, and just navigate with their thoughts and their feelings. Society as a, as a whole, we're reactionary. It's something happens and then we do something about it. We're not proactive in anything that we do. Something has to happen in order for us to make a change. What have we done as a school? We've talked about it, but 
I think having an assembly in which you're telling kids the signs of depression, you're telling the kids the signs of someone that's about to commit suicide or something like that, that's fine and dandy, but you're sitting in, a, in an assembly hall with 400 kids, how many of those actually were listening? Um, I think what they should do instead, instead of talking about it, is a lot of, of y'all don't have a high school experience. So it's all doom and gloom 24 seven. So if you want to change the mental illness side, because a lot of it is depression, a lot of it is, you know, feelings of not being part of something, right? Then you have to create a community. And I mean, you walk around a building, you see one or two W's. You wouldn't even know that this is Wall Trip. If you're having a rough patch in your life, don't worry. There will always be a rainbow after a storm. Never let your responsibilities let you down. And most importantly, don't let others bring you down. If you're struggling with mental stress, there is many ways to treat it. Surround yourself with people that care about you who will be there when you're down. Get an emotional support buddy. Be physically healthy and always active. Go out and run, lift weights, or walk your dog. Tell yourself something positive. Research shows that how you think about yourself can give a powerful effect on how you feel. Open up to someone. Knowing you are valued by others is important for helping you think more positively.